Hey guys, it's Bro you Wacky. Yesterday the Uprising event happened for Overwatch and I figured, hey, I had a full day to immerse myself in the event, just get myself familiarized with the skins, with the game mode, with the whole entire map, just everything like that. I can get to give my full opinion, give a kind of like a report card to everything that comes with this event. But I also want to hear you guys' thoughts on this event, whether you think it's the best event of all time or the worst event of all time. I think I did this for the Chinese New Year event and again, I'm going to do it for this one because a lot has happened with this event that wasn't really done in other events mainly it wasn't a celebration of a real-life holiday which I think is a cool idea like you know they've been doing this a uh, holiday kind of thing events every single event and now they kind of done their own little thing and I think that's a pretty cool and dope way to tell your overwatch story but also just bring out this new event that was previously just other celebrations in the real-life world but the way that I'm gonna be judging this event is just gonna be based on the skins based on the game mode which is a PvE style and then also gonna be based on this map and again I really want Want to hear guys' opinion because it's easy for me just to sit up here and just say, Oh, yeah, this event sucked because it didn't have this, this, or that. If you guys give your opinions, maybe we'll just open my eyes and see what this event offered that other events really didn't. And also, maybe they can improve on it. Like Blizzard can see these types of videos and just say, Okay, well, we should improve in this area and continue to do this and this and that to just bring even better and awesome events. Because I feel like every single event is just getting better and better as terms of the skins, as terms of the quality of the event, just everything that goes on with it. But anyway, let's just just start talking about this event starting off with the skins because I feel like with any single event for any video game I feel like the skins are the number one looked at thing because it's so cool looking at your main or your hero that you play in the game and just seeing different variations different colors and everything like that I think it's just the coolest thing about an event and overwatch is no exception but when I first saw this event I was so hyped up for the skins I mean we all saw the trailer we all saw Blackwatch Genji we all saw Blackwatch McCree and then when the event actually came out I don't want to say I was disappointed because those skins are still really dope the Widowmaker skin also but we also see a skin like the legendary tracer skin and we also see Torbjorn's legendary skins in fact he actually got two skins which I was very surprised and I'm just thinking okay why are those skins not epics why are those skins gonna cost the same amount of money as say the black watch McCree as say the black watch Genji I mean yeah those skins are really cool like you just look at Genji and McCree they just look completely different they look all blacked out and awesome and then you look at tracer and it's just it's just a it's just a blue skin. I mean Reinhardt's blue skin is an epic I don't know. I just it was very confused by it I mean if we just look at past events say like the Halloween event I mean we had the Junkenstein junk rats we saw Frankenstein Roadhog or the Mercy Witch the Reaper those were just awesome skins we see this one and and they're just kind of on the same level as that? Definitely not. I mean, the Reaper Halloween skin is definitely not on the same level as Tracer's legendary skin, but they're still priced the same. I don't know. I kind of find that kind of lackluster, but again, there is still either really dope skins or really lame skins. So in the skin department, I'm going to give it a B because of those. The Widowmaker, Genji, freaking McCree, just all those awesome skins. But in the future, I would not like to see just those kind of lackluster blue skins in the legendary category. I would like to see them in Epic, but not Legendary. Legendary. Also, I didn't really talk about the other items like the highlight intros or the sprays, but I think those were pretty cool. They had some of the best highlight intros like the Torbjorn and the Diva, but they had two voice lines also. I think that was just to make up for the lack of other items. The sprays were also pretty cool, but they gave each hero two voice lines. If you guys don't know, the voice lines really aren't that special, right? We don't open a loot box and like, oh boy, I hope I get the event the voice line. No, it's that's not how it works, honestly. So I think it would be cool just to have more highlight intros. That's just my favorite part or even victory poses there weren't a lot of victory poses And I think only like two emotes or something maybe three I'll have to see but there weren't a lot of variations of items It was either just skins or voice lines and also the player icons But again, I don't open loot boxes for the players icons or voice lines I open them for the emotes skins and highlight intros which there weren't I don't know a lot of I guess now next is gonna be the game mode We literally cried for months for a PvE game mode We cried for something similar to Junkenstein's Revenge because that's that was probably the number one game that we've seen in the event and finally daddy Jeff and the blizzard team came out and gave us uprising so I'm sure you guys have already seen uprising how it works if you didn't I posted a video yesterday which in fact I posted three videos one covering all the skins two covering the event the actual game mode and three doing a loot box opening video where I opened 50 
freaking loot boxes. I, I just, I'm, I'm kind of tilted, a little salty from that. You just have to go watch it to see what I'm talking about. But honestly, this game mode was just a step up from Junk and Sun's Revenge because Junk and Sun's Revenge was just your typical horde wave after wave. This one, it still has that same idea, but now you're moving throughout King's Row and you're still going through waves, but you have to advance forward. You can't just sit there on the ledge. You can't just sit in the back just chilling. No, you actually have a strategy. You have to work together as a team. And I think that's what's so perfect about Uprising is that it's not your typical wave after wave like we saw in Junk and Sun Revenge. You actually have to move the payload. You have to plan out, all right, when am I going to ult? When are we going to get the Bastion? Which, man, those Bastions are... Mm, I'm, again, I'm still tilted from the uh, from the loot boxes. I'm tilted from Bastion. But that is what's so fun about Uprising is that it's playable. It's replayable. That it's just not a one-time thing. We look at Capture the Rooster. It's That's kind of like a one-time thing. Like, you go in. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Not really my cup of tea. And then you hop out of there. But Uprising, on the other hand, you can just play rave after wave after wave. I'm, I'm saying rave as if I'm raving right now. But overall, what I'm trying to say is that it's a consistent game mode that we can play over and over again and in fact practice other heroes such as like Tracer or Torbjorn and everything like that and plus they also have an all hero mode that is just so cool so I gotta give this one an A bro this is just a dope game mode that I would love to see just continue on with other events not really PvP that we've seen with Capture the Rooster but more or less a PvE with different game styles and just different game stories and last but not least it's not the main part about the event but either way I do want to talk about it which is the map which is the remade King's Row which again it's not really redesigned it's just more in daylight there's a bunch of omnics destroyed everywhere it's all purple and everything it's everywhere is on fire so either way I, I did want to talk about King's Row and I think it's a really cool redesign sure it doesn't take a lot to remake a map but if you just look at the past like the Christmas Hanamura map they literally just put snow everywhere and that's that's a little bit boring here at least they put in the daytime they put just a bunch of destruction everywhere just it's a different representation of King's Row than it is in multiplayer and I think that's what's so cool about it so of course I'm gonna give it an A I mean there it's like getting an A and PE it's it's not that hard to get an A and PE guys if you didn't bro what are you doing but either way this event was a really cool one the only thing that I was kind of lacking was just good awesome rememberable skins we look at something at Halloween we have the witch we had the Reaper we had a uh, Junkenstein we had all those awesome skins and that belong in those categories these ones I don't know you can disagree with me you totally can but I don't think tracers blue skin should be on the same level as Black Watch McCree, as Black Watch Genji. However, those skins are really dope. So I gotta give this event a B. I think they could have done better than the skin and category, but I think they focus more or less time in the actual game mode, which I'm all for. So anyway, guys, I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think about this whole entire event. And also check out my other videos that I did yesterday where I covered all the skins, the loot box opening, just everything like that. I did a triple upload for y'all. Just because I, I love y'all. I love it. You love me. I love you. It's just a it's just a weird, I'm not going to get deeper into it. Anyway, guys, I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching, and bye.